Welcome back. So let's talk real quick about empty houses. A lot of people always tweeting and asking, hey, no, we have an empty house. What does that mean? It's okay. It's all right, baby. Relax. You're good. Don't, don't worry. Don't worry. Universe, spirit, God, whatever you want to call it, got you, okay? there. You have to think about it like this, y'all. There are 12 signs and 10 planets that we're majorly working with, okay? Um, there's a lot of asteroids and fixed stars, as well as points within the chart that we use. However, the major things that a lot of astrologers use are the 10 planets, okay? Um, and obviously the North Node, South Node, uh, and Chiron. So don't worry y'all about that. So how do we figure this out? So your natal chart is a circle. Hmm? It's a pizza pie. And this pizza pie has 12 slices. All of these 12 slices are a part of the puzzle, a part of the story of you, a part of an area of life for you, okay? On the outside is the crust. The crust indicates the main energy and structure of that area of your life. For instance, Say you have cancer on the third house, but you don't have any planets. Okay, that's fine. So which element are we dealing with first? This is why I always tell you guys, look at your elements, look at your elements, look at your elements. We're dealing with cancer as a water sign. So when it comes to the third house activities, everything under the third house, we're applying cancer there the energy that's ruling there is the moon because that is the planet that is associated with cancer so then you would look towards your moon sign and your moon sign would show you wherever it's at whichever house and the third house would show you those things together okay how they interact with one another so this pizza pie that you have, let's say it has a lot of toppings, AKA planets in one house. Let's say you have a lot of toppings in the sixth house. That means you have a stellium, three or more planets, okay? Three or more planets, a cluster of planets, a bunch of planets together at a tight orb. An orb, meaning how many degrees are the planets positioned away from each other? Okay, the orbs depend on what you wanna practice. A lot of people do five degrees. Or um, some people do it till eight. Depends on how you want to study. And that's something you will notice over time for yourself. So let's say you have a lot of pizza toppings in the sixth house. That just means that a lot of your other houses are going to be linked back to that sixth house. And they're intertwined with that energy. Okay, so it's almost like your whole, like a lot of your chart has to do with your sixth house, which has to do with self-care, okay, and self-management and um, health. Those are the things that you're going to be thinking about a lot. So even if, you know, it, the cancer's on the fourth house, you have moon in the sixth, those things are going to go together. It's like if one doesn't work without the other, all right? Let's give you an, another example. Let's say you're looking for Venus, all right? Venus is how we appreciate, how we feel appreciated and supported. It's how we can earn money. It's where we can see our investments, you know, it tells us about our romantic relationships. It tells us about our partnerships, things like that, okay? Um, our lovers in our lives, a lot of things with Venus. Love, 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 love. A lot of people want that because, you know, the planet is Venus that we're on. So, Say you have Venus in the second house, which is a good placement. Um, and you're and you're looking, you know, you have Venus in the second house, but you have nothing in Taurus or or Libra. Well, you need to look for Taurus, you know, and Libra, and see where that is because Venus rules both of those signs in different ways, aka the modalities. So this is why. Um, when you think about it, okay, you have to know your signs and your planets, and then you'll be able to match them up together. 
as I said, 12 planets, 10 signs. That means there's a couple of planets that share the same signs. They have the same signs. They just approach them in different ways. For instance, Mars is shared with Aries and Scorpio. And although they're both different because Aries is a fire sign and Scorpio is a water sign, they are still Martian by nature, meaning I'm going to get what the fuck I want, period. Okay? They just do it in different ways. Aries will be more upfront and direct and Scorpio will be more stealth about it. So that's the difference between that. So don't worry about your empty houses. It means nothing. And this is where synastry comes in. Synastry is how many of you vibe off each other, our energy. So even though you might not have nothing in the fourth house, my moon might fall in your fourth house. Okay? Literally. And you will feel like we've known each other forever. All right? And you might watch me in your home or something. Or I might end up in your home and hang out at your house a lot. Stuff like that. You know, I might even move in for a short while with the moon sitting in your fourth house, you know, things like that. So that's what it is. Uh, think of those areas of, of a combination. It's a combination lock, y'all. Astrology is symbolism, you know, concepts and perspectives. And it's looking for patterns. So that's what you're looking for when you're reading any chart, your own chart, somebody else's chart. So I'll give one more example. Let's say you are, what am I going to do? Let's do Mars. Let's say you're a Cancer rising and your Mars is in the first house, okay? This means you get highly irritated really quick. Like you're highly irritable, moody, 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 hypersensitive. How can you mitigate that energy? Well, you need to look to your Aries energy and you need to look to uh, your Aries house and your Scorpio house because they both require Mars' attention, those are the houses that you can do those activities in and you will even out energetically and then you'll feel better. So with that being said of cancer, cancer rising, okay, this could be Aries in your um, 10th house. So that means if you're putting effort and you're staying motivated and you're driven towards your career, right? And um, Scorpio's in your fifth house, most likely, Aries. Yeah, I think so. I think I said it right, right? You guys will correct me. <laughs> um, but then you you want to look to your fifth house and look to your creativity and see what kind of creativity 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 that you can embark on. You know what I'm saying? What kind of fifth house activities can you participate in that are healthy and safe for you? So this is a good way to really look at your chart. It's a it's kind of like thinking of being in a club, you spending too much motherfucking time in the sixth house, sis. Get out the motherfucking sixth house. Your shoes are broken. Your heel just fell off, okay? Your makeup is smeared. You've been sweating all night. You've been here for about 50 years. You need to go ahead and move into another house, all right? And that's how you mitigate that energy and move it and control it around and really get to manifesting in your life the way that you want to. Really focusing on and seeing, okay, I have too much energy here and concentration here. That's why my next series will be the stellium series because I have a fifth house stellium and a sixth house stellium. All right. So <laughs> when it comes to my other houses, I'm not paying as much attention to them. Okay. Um, I have plants in my 12th house. That's why I'm really into this kind of astrology stuff, you know, and communicating with you guys. But when it comes to like my other houses, I have to make sure that I'm actually leaving the fifth house and the sixth house and taking and tending care of my seventh house, my partnerships, my friends, you know, making sure they're good, uh, making sure I'm, you know, learning in the ninth house and traveling and meeting people from different cultures because I need to make sure I'm doing that. I need to be um, in the third house communicating and just having fun communicating, okay? Um, and listening to things that uplift me, make me feel good. So I, you have to like move the energies around the houses. So you're not spending too much time. It's like being at the gym 24 hours and you never get a rest. You're never taking a bathroom break. And that's where the, the, that's where the, um, the um, stagnant emotions of anxiety, frustration, anger, rage, all those kind of things, the ones that are boiling underneath a surface, that's where those come from. It's because those energies are not being moved around in the other house. So... I hope that makes sense on the empty houses. Don't worry about the empty houses. You good. 
all right? Just look for where that house is, the house ruler is in your chart, okay? Meaning the main energy, the crust energy tells you the main thing you're dealing with in that house, okay? And if there's planets there or there's planets on the cusp, that's a different conversation. But right now we're just talking about empty houses, all right, I have an empty third house. Okay, what's sitting on there? Aries, look to your Mars. That will tell you a lot about your third house. I have an empty 11th house. Well, what's there? Um, Pisces, look for Neptune and Jupiter. And that will tell you more information about how you handle your Pisces house. Like what kind of energy, umph, what kind of outfit, what kind of aura you're bringing to your 11th house. That's essentially what's happening, okay? Oh, I don't know where my uh, where my um, Saturn is. Look to your Capricorn and Aquarius because they both share Saturn. So wherever Saturn is, Capricorn and Aquarius, those three houses, okay, potentially Saturn could be in one of those houses, but at max three houses, those three are having a conversation, okay? Those are the things that we're talking about. So I hope that makes sense. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. The empty houses, so don't worry about the empty houses. That's what the transits will do. The transits will light up things in those houses because you have family issues. You have, you know, you want, a lot of people want to travel. A lot of people think about their career. A lot of people, so don't think, oh, I don't have a planet there. I can't get that. That's okay, y'all. Relax. I have no plan. Uh, I have no planets in my first, second, or third house. And I am working, I'm a working actor and astrologer. So don't worry about that. I have no planets in my seventh house and I'm in an amazing relationship. So don't worry about it. Chill out, okay? It's a code that you have to crack.